Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful day, right? It is. We want to welcome you to our service this morning, especially to our visitor. We want to say thank you for coming. Today is a great day. We will be having a baptism today. And we just want to say also thank you to our visiting uh, panelist, uh, Max Stroke. Mark, wherever you are, I want to say thank you for flying in to play for us today. We want to say thank you. We got a few announcements. Great. He back there. We got a few announcements, and the rest of the announcements is in the bulletin. What we want to do, we want to put emphasis on those few announcements. Pastor Rick is starting a new Bible study entitled Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith, beginning this Thursday, April 4th. So it started already at 6.30 p.m. This is an in-person and online, so you got opportunity to either come in, but we want to encourage you to come in. If you don't have no time, wherever you're watching, or you can check or pop online. Right after service, if you are interested in the children ministry, you are invited to stay right in the sanctuary. We'll be having a short meeting for those who are interested in the children ministry. Scholarship application is due April 15th. That's tax day. So if you are not filing your tax, that's an opportunity we're giving you to make sure you file your tax. But if you need scholarship, it's due on April 15th. want to say a huge thank you for all who going to be there flowers or broad breakfast item uh, last Sunday for our Easter celebration. I want to say thank you. The church is so blessed to get you. Also, we are blessed to celebrate, hoping to celebrate the birthday of our, one of our great mother, Jean Bosso. So um, the flower out there today is provided by her children, Christine and her in-law, Joe, and then our great mayor, Lance Westkin, in honor of their mother 92 birthday. Continue to keep her in prayer as she recover. Later of faith, uh, we meet this Tuesday, April 9 at 6 p.m. Please note the mission committee will meet on Wednesday, April 17 at 6 p.m. The May and June upper room bulletin is available at the back. If you want to pick up one, we encourage you to pick up that. That is good for a lot of devotion. If you need more information, please check our bulletin um, for that. Please join me as we go through the breakthrough prayer. Amazing God, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, your preferred feature for growth for the United Methodist Church will be made clear to us. Give us the courage we need to follow you wherever you take us. We ask this. Open our eyes so that we may see the amazing things we are already doing. Amen. Please quiet your heart to prepare for service for the prelude and the light on the candle.
Thank you, Mark. Beautiful. All right, please stand as you're able for our opening song. Shine, Jesus, shine. in the Lord with all your hearts. Do not rely on your own understanding. It is hard to trust when so much is unknown, when we can't see the next step, when the way is clear. All things are possible for the one who has faith. It is hard to have faith when religion seems like empty promises, when prayers seem unheard, and when there is no answer for suffering. Happy are those who find trust and wisdom, who have faith and seek understanding. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. You may be seated, please.
scripture reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even you grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Please join me in the prayer of confection. God of mystery and wonder, we bring our dad to you. We confess that all too often. We have allowed that to overcome faith. We have turned away when our questions become too hard or too painful. We have preferred easy, smaller imitation of the truth to the life and faith you desire for us. We are sought refuge in certainty. Forgive us, we pray. Lead us to the half of belief that is unfair of that. I welcome mystery, I trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. What of assuring? Heard a good news. That is not the enemy of faith. Believe and rejoice. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I'd like to ask now for for Lindy to come forward and for us to be in a, a time and in an attitude of prayerful reflection as we participate in the sacrament of baptism. Lindy, I ask you now, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, I do. I do. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who will receive it, to wash away their sin and to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. 
All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Lindy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we ask now that your Holy Spirit fall upon Lindy, that you Allow her to feel your love each and every day and that she may know of your care, of your concern, no matter what she faces in her life. We thank you for this wonderful child of yours. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Well, let's welcome Lindy to the family of faith. You can. Now, part of me wanted to say, you did know that after that, you have to do the sermon. <laughs> but I decided we, we didn't really want to see somebody have a heart attack, so... But, um, uh, um, oh, wait, I forgot to give Lindy the certificate suitable for framing. I know. Don't want to, you never want to forget your souvenir. Oh, it's always one of my favorite parts of, of, of this job. Now is the time in which we can share our joys and concerns with one another and, and bring them before the Lord. If you have a prayer concern, I would invite you to fill out one of the uh, blue prayer request card, which should be located there in your bulletin, and you can just drop that in the offering plate, and someone will be sure to pray for you um, as we uh, go to prayer today. I also want to remind you that during the week, you can always email us at our prayer line at prayer at groveportumc.org. Um, you can also always call the church office and talk to Nancy, um, or you could even just drop us a line during the week uh, in the mail, because the mailman still comes uh, five days a week, and we would love to hear from you. Also, know that as we go to prayer together here this morning, if you feel uh, led, you are more than welcome to come forward and to pray at the rail and, and know that if you do so, someone will be here to pray with you because we know that God has called us to be the family of Christ. I invite you now to be in silent reflection as we prepare for this holy time of prayer.
God of us all. We thank you for this place of worship and this time of prayer. As we gather together this morning, we share with you the concerns of our hearts and of our lives. Lord, we pray for all of those who have received the, the diagnosis of cancer. We ask for your kind and gentle hand to rest upon Tom and Susan, Jack and Bobby, Lori and Doris and Bob. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayers. Lord, this morning we pray for Ron, who has had multiple blood transfusions over this past week, and we pray for his health to improve. Dear Lord, we, we just ask that you uh, allow him to know that you are with him and that he is in our thoughts and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, And Lord, we lift to you in prayer those who are facing upcoming medical procedures. Please be with Bentley and Lindy and, and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who are recovering from recent surgeries, from, from illnesses and injuries. We pray for healing to continue for Tim and Roy, Jean and Nancy, for David and Jeff, for Kim and Tom, for Robbie and for Lynn. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that David will get into his chosen field of study. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, today we pray for Mike and, and all of the volunteers who are bringing the Kairos ministry to the Southeast Correctional Facility next week. Lord, help them to soften hearts and to touch souls with your life-saving gospel. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we, we pray for, for Gary, who is unable to be with us here today, and, and, and pray that uh, he will, will feel better. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we continue to pray for uh, Brittany and her family. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given to us. But most especially, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, and the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In this offering time is the time we come to bless God, to tell God thank you for our, the blessing he blessed us, to give a little token for all the blessing he, he, he continued to bless us with. There are several ways you can do that. You can do that through the Ezekiel app on our website, or you can um, write out a check and send it to uh, 512 uh, Main Street, uh, Grove Port, Ohio, 43125. Or the usher will come around uh, with the plate. You can put that in there. 
So we want to invite the usher to please come forward. Can you please stand for the dustology? to speak true, O oh God, we give you glory. Grant us the courage to share your gift this day and all day. Amen. You may be seated, please.
Right, good morning, everyone. How many of you have school tomorrow? No? Are you all out for, 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 the, uh, for, for the eclipse tomorrow? Woo, how many parents are excited? I know, it's going to be fun. All right, I am going to ask you guys a question. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? All right, what do you think's in the bag? Huh? Lunch. Some wishful thinking. What do you think's in the bag? Huh? Tacos. I'm seeing a theme. Nothing. He knows me well. What do you think? Eclipse glasses. Well, those would be very useful, wouldn't they? All right. Well, I am going to tell you what's in this bag. Do you know what's in this bag? Dumplings. Dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly specific. <laughs> I wonder what somebody wants for lunch today. No, it's a basketball. It's a basketball. How many of you believe I have a basketball? Raise your hand. How many of you believe? All right. Why do you believe that I really have a basketball in here? It's round, so you have some, maybe some clue. And it looks like a spear, so it could be, right? All right. Who else thinks I really have a basketball in here? All right, so you're thinking I, I, I'm, tell, I'm not telling you, I, I'm telling you a tale, right? Because it's not round enough. A dinosaur? I don't know if it's a dinosaur. Huh? Who else thinks I'm telling you the truth? That I really have a... All right, so why, why do you... All right, raise your hand again if you think I'm telling you the truth. Why do you think I'm telling you the truth? Other than that you've seen some evidence, but why else might you believe that I'm telling you the truth? Because it's a circle? And I can, yeah? Well, sometimes when people tell us things, we have to have faith in them, right? Faith is believing something that somebody says but we can't necessarily 100% prove. So, who wants to see if I'm really telling you the truth? All right, come on up. Am I telling you the truth? Yep. yep. There's a basketball. Oh! All right, basketball back in. There we go. I'm learning. All right, see, faith, it, you guys took it on faith, at least some of you did, that I was telling you the truth, right? You trusted me because you have known me and you know that I generally tell you what's true, right? So that's the same way it is with God. We have to trust God. We can't always 100% prove. We can see little tidbits thinking that maybe that's true, but in the end, just like this bag, we have to just take God for his word. Right? All right. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this uh, day. We thank you for these uh, young folks. And, and Lord, help us to continue to have faith because we can't always know 100% for sure. We sometimes just have to take a leap. Thank you, Lord, for all that you give us. Amen. All right. You guys can head off to uh, Junior Church if you want. And I will leave the basketball down here because I like the people who are doing junior church. <laughs> yep, you are very, very welcome. Our second spiritual reading today is taken from the book of Psalm 19, 1 to 2. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaimed the work of his hands. 
Day after day, they pull false speech. Net after net, they reveal knowledge. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, as your scriptures are read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by your holy word. Thank you for your gift of scripture, we pray. Amen. But before we we continue, uh, I want to give a couple of quick shout outs. First, big thank you to Mark, who is our guest organist today. Let's show some love. Always, always great to have him here. Um, also, i um, like to thank Kelly, uh, who is uh, filling in for, for Terry, who is, is, is on vacation today, and as well as uh, uh, for uh, Gary, who is under the weather today and, and, and is unable to, to, to be here. And um, Just really appreciate that, because if not, I'm going to have to help you lead singing, and nobody wants that. <laughs> Well, I hope and, uh, and trust that everyone had a, a pretty good Easter last week. Uh, it was so nice to, to be able to celebrate the resurrection with all of you last Sunday. And I know for some of you, this, this past week has been spring break. And, and while I know that you know, some of the kids around here are probably kind of bummed that school starts back tomorrow, I'm, I'm sure there are some parents who are just giddy with excitement. Um, you know, spring break is, is, is always one of those uh, fun times, uh, but also, you know, can be kind of tiring. But as we gather together this day, I am reminded of a, a big event that is coming up this week. What big event is tomorrow? The eclipse. All right, I have to see a show of hands. How many of you have your official eclipse glasses for tomorrow? I got to tell you, I got myself some eclipse glasses, you know, that they got the little ISO number on the side so I don't burn out my, my retinas or whatever tomorrow. But am I, please tell me I'm not the only one that when I was a kid, I used to stare at the sun and then close my eyes to see the pretty colors. I'm not the only one who did that, right? Okay, good. But you know, tomorrow is the eclipse. But I don't know if you've seen any of this online, but apparently not just the eclipse is happening tomorrow, but apparently the world is going to end. <laughs> and you have chosen to spend your second to the last day on earth with me. I feel very, very privileged. Now, I didn't really know most of this until I looked this up this week, but apparently, starting tomorrow, during the eclipse, CERN is going to turn on the the giant particle accelerator tomorrow, and they are going to open a portal to a different dimension or create a black hole that will swallow all the Earth. It depends who you talk to. (laughs) Also, apparently tomorrow... The eclipse will cross seven cities named Nineveh and cross the path of the 2017 eclipse at a town called Little Egypt, Illinois. Now, part of that is actually true. It is going to cross a couple of towns named Nineveh, and it is going to go across Little Egypt, Illinois, but uh, four of those cities named Nineveh are not going to have a total eclipse. So um, maybe uh, Armageddon isn't tomorrow. This one, uh, uh, this conspiracy I heard, NASA is using the eclipse to help gain magical power. Have you heard this? So they're going to shoot some rockets up to to, to see the the, the difference in um, the thickness of the atmosphere during an eclipse. And apparently 
they're going to do some magic there at old NASA headquarters and um, summon a, a, a demon or something. Uh, but, but my absolute favorite uh, c conspiracy theory for tomorrow is this. Since scientists and the government keep saying not to look directly into the sun, there must be something that's going to happen in the sun that they don't want us to know. Which means we should do what? We should all stare directly into the sun and see what happens. Okay, please don't do that. I'm going to have eye doctors all over saying, oh, I can't believe you told people to do that, right? Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I'm going to say most of us, if not all of us, do not believe in these conspiracies, right? We don't really believe that the, 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 the giant Hadron uh, uh, particle accelerator in Europe is going to open a portal to a different dimension, although, you know, they did it, you know, in, in the Marvel movies bunches of times, so, um, yay, the multiverse. But we know that's not in real life, right? And we know that NASA isn't really going to use the eclipse to gain some sort of, of supernatural power over us. And, and we certainly know that tomorrow isn't the end of the earth. It isn't the end of the world. Why do we know this? We know this because God has given us one of these, right? We got brains. We can think. We know because we ask questions. And when we ask questions about things, it helps us to sort through reality from fiction. God gave us a brain, and he sure wants us to use that. My friends, as Christians, it is okay for us to ask questions. It is okay for us to examine our faith because there are no questions we can ask that are going to hurt God. Think about it. If God really created the entire universe, which is billions of light years wide, what is it, like 18 billion light years uh, to cross the observable known universe? If God is able to create all that, a question you are going to ask is not going to harm God. Asking questions is part of who we are as people. It reminds me of a family I encountered recently when I was out grocery shopping. and I was standing there in the aisle trying to pick out pasta sauces and um, I, I heard a, a, a family come up behind me, and I heard this cute little voice ask, What's that? And the mom answered, and a few seconds later, What's that? And a few seconds later, What's that? And then the ever-famous, Why? <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about when you have little kids. The, those are their two favorite uh, uh, sentences. What's that and why? We are created by God to ask a lot of questions. And so over the next few weeks, we are, are going to be looking at some of the questions that perhaps um, make it difficult for some people to believe in God, to, to, to accept faith. So today, we are going to start with perhaps the most fundamental of those questions, and that is this. Does God exist? Now, if you think that I am going to be able to prove to you in the next couple of minutes that God truly exists and it'll be a proof that you can use uh, when you talk to anybody and they will just 100% believe you, you are sadly wrong. Because if I could do that, I would write a book and I would have my own jet. <laughs> but I still think it's good for us to, to touch on this here a little bit.
also know that over the next few weeks, um, some of these questions don't have just one answer. And know that these are just my thoughts on the subject, but they, they need not be yours. As the great John Wesley once said, it is the unavoidable consequence of the present weakness and shortness of human understanding that we be of several minds in religion as in common life. Though we may not think alike, may we not love alike? May we not be of one heart, though we of not of one mind? To put it another way, let's agree to disagree. Fun fact, John Wesley is credited with coining that phrase. You can go home at lunch and impress your friends, neighbors, and family. With that, uh, let's start looking at this pretty common question. How do I know that God exists? Well, it's kind of a, a fundamental question for us. I, I mean, if, if there's no God, then what are we doing here on a Sunday morning? Perhaps more importantly, why am I dressed like this? So let's take a look at the question. Does God exist? Does God exist? Well, I think the first thing we need to establish is that believing in God requires faith. I mean, this makes sense. For in any major decision, certainty is virtually impossible. There is an element of faith required. For instance, let's say you want to buy a car. So you research all the different makes and models to find the car that best fits your needs. You research car prices. You read customer customer reviews online, carefully discerning which reviews are real and which ones are fake. Yes, companies pay for fake reviews online. You finally choose a car, you put your money down. Now, are you sure that you made the right choice? Are you sure that this car isn't going to break down on your way home from the car lot? Are you sure that you got a good price? where you carefully looked into things and you made the best decision you could based upon the available facts, yet there is still a certain element of faith involved in such a transaction. See, you can't be 100% sure of your choice. There is an element of faith in every big decision we make. Something else we should remember is this. Faith is a choice we make. It is a decision while God is always reaching out to us in many ways, it is still up to us to take that step toward the divine. But the thing is, we can't ever be 100% certain when we take that step. This is true when we put our faith in a car, or in a spouse, or in a friend, or in a doctor, or in the pilot on the plane we are flying on to vacation. Faith is a choice we make. It is, it is a decision to trust. After looking at the available information, we have to decide for ourselves if we are willing to have faith in God, if we are willing to trust in him. Each of us must decide on our own if we believe that there is a creator of the whole universe and that he loves us. And this isn't always easy. Now, have you ever noticed that there are certain words that you just don't hear very often in church? One of those words, I think, is doubt. Now, we do hear it used, but isn't it almost always in a negative way? How many sermons have you heard about poor old doubting Thomas? Though we often forget that Thomas was one of Jesus' most loyal disciples. That's because the word doubt seems to taint his character. But you know, doubt is not the opposite of faith, but rather a component of it. If you remember the Easter story from last week, Peter and James and Mary and the rest of the disciples had to take the information at hand, and then they had to decide for themselves if they were going to believe in the resurrection. And some doubted. But you know, doubt is not the opposite of faith. See, we too must review 
what we can know, and to make a choice to believe or not to believe. Now, I personally believe that there is a God. I'm sure that this isn't a big surprise to most of you. But let me explain a couple of reasons real quick why I believe. Like so many others, when I, I look into the world around me, I, I see the work of the Creator. Thousands of years ago, this same observation was recorded in Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, writes the psalmist. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. The natural order of the world tells us a lot about God. But this isn't unique to just here and now. Most people throughout the world of any religion regard the order, purpose, and beauty of the natural world as evidence of the divine. But to be fair, some may observe the natural world and conclude that there is no God. Beauty and order do not prove conclusively that there is a God, but rather they are just important evidence that leads many to believe. As we study the natural environment, there's often a perceived conflict between science and faith, but, but science and faith do not have to be enemies. See, many influential scientists throughout history believed in God. Men like Copernicus and Galileo and Johannes Kepler all believed in God. And a large percentage of modern scientists today express faith in God. Modern science and its conclusions do not disprove God, and, and faith can enrich one's appreciation of science. Science and its understanding of nature can deepen our faith. It doesn't threaten it. While the natural order and beauty of the world are compelling arguments for the existence of God, I think our personal experiences of God can be more powerful and more persuasive. Many of you can probably identify with this. There have been times in my life when I could sense someone was with me. I was not alone. I was loved. I was cared for. I was being guided. I was being helped. Where the natural order and the beauty of the world are compelling arguments for the existence of God, our personal experiences of God can be even more powerful. But it's not just my personal experience. I've had too many people tell me their own stories about an encounter with the divine for me to just ignore it. Finally, I believe in God because I trust in Jesus and his teachings. And Jesus believed in God. And because I believe in Jesus and I trust in Jesus, I believe what he says. And Jesus says there's a God. And I believe in Jesus. And with the resurrection, I believe in the resurrection. And without God, there is no resurrection. God does not give us certainty when it comes to faith, but mystery. And the question we need to answer for ourselves this morning is this. Are we open to exploring the mystery of faith? Are we willing to take a step into the unknown? I love this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Are you willing to take that first step? Are you willing to take a step toward God? Think about that this week. Let us pray. Lord, help us to have faith. Help us, Lord, to see the evidence and to decide for ourselves. Lord, remind us that asking questions is not wrong, but a vital part of who we are as followers of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being with us, for caring for us, even when we have trouble walking with you. 
In the name of Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Well, this morning we will be celebrating uh, the sacrament of Holy Communion. We, of course, practice open communion, which means that everyone who feels led by God is invited to participate. Let us now be in a, a time and an attitude of prayer. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood. Uh, eat this. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and in the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And this, this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. All is now ready. I'll ask the ushers to come forward. We will be taking communion in our seats this morning, which means that first, a tray containing the bread will be passed. You are invited to take a piece of bread and then to hold that bread until everyone has been served. And then we will take that element together. Likewise, a tray containing the uh, juice will be passed to you. You're invited to take a cup, to hold that cup until all have been uh, served. And then we will take that cup, uh, cup together. Let us now be in an attitude of prayer and reflection.
My friends, this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this gift of bread and wine that once again makes us a part of your redeeming plan for this world. Thank you for loving us even when we weren't lovable. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, let's now stand and join together in our closing hymn. I'll fly away. kids programs, especially for this summer. So uh, if you'd be interested, uh, just stick around right in here and we will have that here in just a couple of minutes. And now, may the love of God guide you every place you go. May it be a part of every interaction. God's love knows no bounds. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.